Hello again everyone and welcome to my Warlock Point of View Raid Guides. In this guide I'm going to go over the first boss of the Throne of the Four Winds which is Conclave of Wind, this time on Heroic Mode. Now for this guide I'm assuming you've been placed on the Wind Platform. Warlocks are very good to put on the Wind Platform as I'll describe. The main differences on Heroic are he gains two new abilities, uh, the Storm Shield and kind of an enhanced Wind Blast. The Wind Blast is like the one on normal mode, except it rotates three quarters of the way around the platform and moves very, very quickly. Now when you first start on the platform, both these cooldowns happen at once, so he'll start casting the Wind Blast and the Storm Shield at the same time. Once the Storm Shield goes up, you've got around three seconds to get it down. Being as most of our spells kind of take about that long to cast, you want to save things like Conflagrate or anything that's instant that you can use to burst down the shield. You notice that the wind blast there was placed slightly to my left. Being as I know it's going to move three quarters of the way around the platform, I know I'm safe stood where I was. I've placed my portal to the right, such that if the wind blast was to come towards me, I could just portal to the portal and bypass the, the wind blast altogether. After about one minute, we change platforms onto the ice platform. Now as soon as you land, being as an ice patch can be placed under any player, make sure you move slightly round to the left. You'll want to avoid putting any ice patches in the middle of the middle of the platform because when he casts his ultimate, that's where he's going to teleport to. If you're a destruction warlock, remember to put your bane of havoc up on the boss before you transfer platforms. We hugged up on the platform so we could use healing cooldowns to absorb a lot of the damage of the ultimate. See, so we put a bubble up and everyone gets underneath it. Once you're hugged up like this, make sure you remember to use your short range abilities. Now the timings of the various wind blasts are what tends to screw up this part for the wind platform. This wind blast is just about to happen, so don't go back as soon as the ultimate happens. Wait for the wind blast to finish casting before you change back. I just topped all my dots off, put the bane up and then got back to the platform. You want to make sure that you land just as the wind blast ends, this will give you time to get all your dots up ready for the next storm shield. The second storm shield tends to be the easiest one, the third one's probably the most tricky. As before, attempt to save things like conflagrate or anything else you've got off cooldown to try and get the shield down as fast as possible. And the next wind blast about to hit now. So on the second wind blast you move off the platform before he casts it. Again remember if you're destruction get your bane up as you transfer platforms. These are the ice patches you want to avoid placing in the middle. Remembering of course when he casts his ultimate they all teleport to the middle of their platforms. The timing of the third wind blast is quite tricky. It basically hits about 10 seconds after the ultimate ends, so you've got two options really. You can either stay on the ice platform and then try and get back after it, or you can leave the ice platform slightly before the ultimate ends and try and get there before it starts. We opted for moving as soon as possible, so we waited until about 5 seconds before the ultimate ends and then moved as a group over to the platform, hoping to get there quickly so we get, everyone could get in position to avoid the wind blast. You can see the timing here is quite tight. Just as we land, he's about to cast the wind blast. This means you could bit get some really awkward positioning here. Luckily, it's a good one, meaning we can all just stand behind him. You can see he's gone to 20%, so I've got an additional cooldown to help me get down the shield. Now on this one, it's best to get him to 10 to 5% and then go back over to the, w the ice platform and help those, those people DPS down their boss. You want to make sure the wind boss and the ice boss die around the same time. Provided the life boss is on about 50% when the other two die, it's possible with a, with a heroism to burst him down. Now 
what we found it was best to do here was once you've all gathered up to take this ultimate, we only sent one or two people back to the wind platform to finish off that boss, and the rest stayed on the ice platform. In this attempt we hadn't quite got the tactics down so we sent more than one DPS back to finish off the wind boss. The wind boss goes down at about 3% which we didn't realise on the first attempt so... Once the first boss goes down you got one minute to finish off the rest of the bosses. So yeah, we screwed this one up slightly so... There goes the frost boss, but the frost boss should be dead at the same time as the wind boss. This should give you the full minute to burst down the, the life boss. Now a nurture occurs just as you land if you're doing it this way as well, so make sure you group up with the rest of the group who are already here, and don't cast any AoEs. If you're destruction, don't use your infernal here. You'll just pull aggro on the thing and then take a spore cloud and die. Make sure you use all your cooldowns to get them down as fast as possible. Now if you look at the health bar on the right, you'll realize that on this attempt we were unsuccessful by half a percent. So this succeeded to be a wipe. But unfortunately this was the clearest video I got of the encounter, so here's a video at the end just to prove that we did kill it. Thank you for watching my guide, I've been Optic of Trollbane Europe. Cheers.